Assalamu alaikum. A very good morning to all of you. Um, this is uh, a lecture of EMT for week 12. Uh, in which for week 12, these are the topics that we're going to learn based on the CI that we have. Uh, in which for week 12, the topics covered will be mainly related to electromagnetic field, or also known to be a time bearing field. Yeah? Okay, time bearing field. Okay, so for this time bearing field, uh, these are the topics we're going to learn basically. Number one, we're going to see a migration from time bearing electromagnetic field to a dynamic or time bearing field. Okay, so that should be the first thing. We're going to see the difference, yeah between the time uh, invariant or static static field of both electric and magnetic field uh, and also the time bearing electric and magnetic field. So what should be the difference between them? And following this, we're going to learn about the Faraday's law, yeah, which will be the main topics to be learned in uh, lecture 21. Okay, so for Faraday's law, these are three main cases that we're going to have. Yeah, we have number one, the static circuit of time bearing field. Number two, a moving circuit of static field. And number three will be a moving circuit and time bearing field. Okay, so this basically are the uh, method or uh, mode of generation of EMF related to the Friday stock. Yeah? Okay. So lecture 21, uh, these are the topics that you're going to learn. Number one uh, will be a short introduction to the time bearing field. And number two will be the Friday stock. So reference for these topics, uh, or lecture 21, we can refer to study code, page 426 to page 438. Yeah? Okay, so these are the objectives for lecture 21. Uh, number one, basically going to have a look on the difference between a static field and also a time varying field in general. Number two, going to uh, learn about the phenomena of current generation by the method of time varying magnetic field. So this is what we call as Faraday's law in general. Yeah? Okay, so Faraday's law in general is a method whereby the electric current can be produced from a time bearing magnetic field. Yeah? And number three is to investigate on the changes of Maxwell's equation related to uh, Faraday's law. Right, so these are the three objectives that you're going to have in lecture 21. So let us produce, proceed with the first objective. Okay, so this will be the difference between the time bearing field and also the static field. Uh, for the first uh, diagram here, where we have a field sources which can be in type of uh, static charges or a type of electric current or DC current. So the field produced, the ENH will be uh, ENH, which will be basically uh, changed or varied according to uh, coordinates, according to the position. Yeah? But looking at the uh, structure down here, uh, where we have a field sources, in this case, a field sources which will be a time bearing field sources, we can have, see that the E and H produced will also depending on time variation. Yeah, so we can see from this diagram that the E and H, apart from uh, positioned uh, variation, yeah, it is also a time variation. Yeah, so the value of E and H will be depending on position and also depending on time. Okay, so that should be a very clear difference between the static field and also the time varying field. Okay, uh, so for time varying field, there will be two main issues that we're going to concentrate, yeah, we to concentrate. Uh, you read the first one will be a Faraday's law, which will be the main topics for the current lecture. And next, we're going to have a look on displacement current. Yeah, uh, and two, these two issues will be basically modify the Maxwell's equation that we have seen before uh, for the case of static field. If you can recall, we have four equation of Maxwell. We have a uh, d dot ds equals to the enclosed charge. This is for the current, sorry, this is for the Gauss law. And in terms of the point form, we're going to have divergence of d equals to rho v. Then number two, we have the equations of uh, Potential, yeah, uh, the potential chapter four. We have the curl of, sorry, the closed loop integration of E dot dl equals to zero. And we have curl of E equals to zero, a point form. Number three, you know, we have the Ampere's capital law, H dot dl equals to enclosed current. Or in terms of point form, it is a curl of H equals to J 
Okay, and the fourth one will be the Gauss law for magnetic field. That's why we have B dot dS equals to zero. And in point form, it is um, uh, 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 divergence of B equals to zero. Yeah. So these are the four mass equations that we have seen before in a static field. So we're going to have a look later uh, when we learn about the furthest law and also displacement current, what will be the changes that will be introduced in this particular Maxwell's equation. Yeah? Okay, so let's have a look on the Faraday's law. Okay, uh, basically for this law, as I mentioned before, in terms of its definition, it is generation of electric current due to time varying magnetic field. Yeah? So this is the basic things that you need to understand. And for this law is basically a method or a concept which can be used to produce an electric current from the time varying magnetic field. Okay, and this is uh, this concept is basically discovered by Mr. Michael Faraday in 1831, based on this uh, experimental setup. Yeah, by him. Okay, so in this experimental setup, we got these two uh, circuits, primary circuits. Yeah, primary circuits, and also this is a secondary circuit. So primary circuit consists of the battery and also few uh, windings. And for secondary, secondary circuit, we got the loop and also the galvanometer. Okay, so uh, based on this uh, experimental setup, he note that these are the observation that have been deduced, that have been uh, uh, observed yeah, by Faraday. Number one is that when the battery is turned on, there is a deflection in galvanometer. Okay, deflection in galvanometer. Number two is when the battery is turned off, there is also deflection in galvanometer, but in the opposite direction from one. Okay, so the number one and number two basically are related. Yeah, battery is turned on, battery is turned off. Yeah, knowing that uh, the, the battery here is a DC battery. Yeah, so if you can have a look on this particular uh, case, this is the time. Yeah, and this is the I can say this is a flux generation. Oh, uh, yeah, flux generation. Flux. Okay, uh, so when the battery is turned on. Yeah, I can say that this is a very short time here. When the battery is turned on, we're going to have a very short time. Let's say this is a T1 difference of time. So for, for this particular very small time changes, we can have a flux changes, a flux variation. Yeah, a flux variation. And this flux variation that is produced in this particular primary windings down here. This flux will then linkage to the secondary windings, and the flux linkage to the secondary windings will be then produce a current that will flow in the loop and then deflect the galvanometer. Okay, so this is the observations that can be deduced from these findings. Yeah, so it's very short time. So it's very short time. We have a ram. Uh, yeah, we have a ram of the flux. Yeah, from zero to a certain amount. And afterwards, when the battery, because the battery is a DC battery, so the time will be will be stabilized. Okay, will be stabilized. Okay. And afterwards, when the battery is turned off, again, you're going to have a change of time, a very short change of time. Okay, let's say this is a T2 change of time. And again, here we're going to have a, a flux change. Yeah, flux change for the primary windings, and the flux change will be again linkage into the second secondary loop and afterwards the current will be produced in the loop and then again the, the, the galvanometer will be deflected but in the opposite direction. So this is what we call as a EMF generation. Yeah electromotive force generation, EMF generation or the induced current generation uh, produced by the time bearing yeah time bearing field. Okay so note that we have a very short Flux changes here, yeah. Flux changes. This is a flux changes side of MT because uh, if you base on this concept here, uh, we have a current, uh, a current. Current will then produce the field. Field will then produce the flux, and the flux will then produce what we call as the EMF. Yeah, but remember that the flux here must be a time varying flux as shown here. So within this time, the constant time here, nothing happened. Yeah, means that the flux will not be linkage. Yeah, the flux will not be linkage to the loop. 
Yeah, and then there is to be no movement on the galvanometer. There should be no deflection on the galvanometer. Deflections happen only when there is a current produced in the loop. And this current produced is the induced current, which is based on the linkage of the time bearing flux from the primary to the secondary one. Okay, so this is the concept of Faraday's law, which is related to the first and the second observation. And for the third, gen third observation, he mentioned that he showed that the moving loop will then cause the deflecting galvanometer, which means that when this loop is moved, yeah, move in and out, yeah, uh, to these primary windings or primary circuit, yeah, we can say that the galvanometer will be deflected. Okay, so this is the findings made by Mr. Michael Faraday. And based on this observation, he formulated this equation of electromotive force, the EMF, which states that EMF in both is returned to be negative d psi m over the dt, in which in order for this equation to be valid, yeah, the psi of m, which is the flux, magnetic flux, must be a time bearing flux. Otherwise, the differenti differentiation will give us zero. Yeah? So psi of m must be time bearing. Then only it can be differentiated with regard to time. So for psi of m t to be to be to be valid, so the current must be a time varying the h field must also be a time varying and subsequently the flux will be a time varying okay so this will be the equation of uh uh, uh law yeah apart from that instead of having uh ht uh, which is uh time varying we can also have a case whereby because we know that the flux is related to the equation yeah Flux is based on the equation of B dot dS. Okay, so what we have discussed here is that related to the H field or the B field, which is time varying. But is apart from having uh yeah, flux B, I mean the, the magnetic flux which is time varying, we can also have a case whereby the dS uh, will be uh, changed, yeah, in which the psi of mt, the flux can also be a time varying if your field is constant, but the area is changed or the, 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 the circuit is moving. Okay, so this is related to the third observation. Although the field is constant, but due to the movement of the circuit, yeah, due to the circuit movement, the flux can also be a time bearing and as such, the EMF can still be produced. Okay, so these are two factors that can uh, produce the EMF, the EMF number one, a time bearing flux, yeah, which is based on the time bearing field. Number two, a time bearing flux, which is based on the moving circuit. Right, yeah. So hopefully you understand the the, the principle, the basic understandings that uh, govern the Faraday's law. Okay, so this is the equation of Faraday's law. Uh, we have seen this just now. But remember about negative sign here, yeah, about Lenz law. Yeah, Lenz law must work together with the Faraday's law, which means that uh, the Lenz law must always against. Yeah, Lenz law say that the flux or the induced flux produced must must always against the initial or the primary uh, field or primary flux direction. Yeah, I, I repeat again, the Lenz law state that the induced current or the induced field must always against the direction of uh, initial field direction. Okay, right. So based on this equation, that the flux magnetic flux is based on the integration of B dot dS, or we can have three types of uh, EMF generation. Number one is that when we have a time bearing field and a static circuit. Uh, yeah. So based on this equation, we can have that the flux, which is time bearing, can be based on the time bearing field and the circuit which is static or the ds which is static it's not time bearing okay so this is similar to a transformer method of generation yeah transformer EM generation where we have a transformer like this okay the transformer okay we have a primary windings we have a secondary windings so note that the circuit is not moving it's static but the field or the current must be a time bearing in which from the time varying field it will produce a time varying 
for a time varying current, we're going to produce a time varying field, and subsequently the flux will be a time varying. So the flux will be then linked to the secondary windings, and the induced current will be produced in the secondary winding. So this is the basic principle of uh, transformer EMF. Yeah? Right, so that should be the first. The second one is a, a static field and moving circuit. Yeah, in, based on the equation here, we have a psi of MP equals to integration of B. Circuit is static, so B is not uh, based on time variation, so B is static, but the circuit is time variation, the, the, which means that the circuit is, circuit is moving. Okay, so this is the second method of EMF generation, which is called as motional EMF, which is the typical concept of EMF generation uh, in, uh, in, in a dynamo yeah? or in generator. Okay, so this will be the motional EMF. And then the third one will be a combination of a transformer EMF and motional EMF, whereby you're going to have a time varying field, you're going to have a moving circuit. Or you can say that for the third uh, method of EMF generation, we're going to have the flux, which is based on time varying field and also the circuit is moving. Okay, so this is the third method, the three methods on how the EMF, EMF can be generated. Uh, in the circuit. Okay, so let's have a look on this uh, first EMF, which is a, a transformer EMF. Okay, so for transformer EMF, uh, if we base on this particular circuit here, uh, we have a magnetic field uh, which is directed upwards. Yeah, the BT is increasing. So from the Lenz law, the induced magnetic field will always against the direction of initial magnetic field, so that's why we have the direction of the uh, field will be against, yeah, like this, and as such, your induced current will be in this direction. Yeah, so this arrow, note that this is the direction of your induced current based on the Lenz law. Okay, and if we base on the transformer EMF equation, we're going to have EMF equals a negative d psi m over t, yeah, this is the equation basically, negative d psi m over the dt and psi of m is based on the integration of b dot ds so we have this equation number one for the emf calculation in the circuit in which emf is a potential between the point one and point two okay so note that this particular circuit is a closed loop circuit so knowing that uh, a closed loop circuit the EMF or the potential in this uh, in this circuit can also be calculated based on the equations that we have seen in chapter four, whereby if you can recall, uh, the potential is based on the integration of closed loop E dot df. Yeah. So this is the equation that we have seen in chapter four about the potential calculation. Yeah. Potential is equals to closed loop integration of E dot df. But last time, when we learned about this equation in static field, this equation gives us zero. Yeah, because we are doing the static field, but not in a time varying field, because in time varying field, we have seen just now that the EMF generated for that particular closed loop circuit is based on this equation. Okay, and basically, if this equation number one and these equations are similar, because both are used to calculate the potential in a closed loop circuit. And as such, yeah, this equation that we have seen. So we can equate both equations. Yeah, we can equate both equations there. And for this, we're going to use a Stokes theorem for left hand side because we can see that this is a loop integration, this is a surface integration. So as such, we need to use a Stokes theorem in which uh, these equations can be written in terms of the surface integration. Yeah, the Stokes theorem. Remember the Stokes theorem state that. If we have closed loop integration of A dot dl, that it should be equal to the curl of A dot ds. Okay. So this is Stokes theorem, yeah? which relate the loop integration and the surface integration. And as such, we're going to have for left hand side, the equation will be written as this. Sorry, uh, we're going to have a uh, 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 integration, yeah, integration of curl of E dot ds. Yeah, curl of E dot ds shall be equal to db over dt dot ds. I'm afraid that there should be no closed surface integration here. Yeah, just a normal integration, a surface integration, in which you're going to have that the, the equation now becomes if we compare this 
terms and this term is going to have circle of A should be equal to negative DB over DT. Okay, so basically this is the equation of Maxwell uh, that uh, has been uh, uh, modified uh, uh, for the case of time varying field. Yeah, because pre remember that previously for the static field, we have the curl of, sorry, close loop integration of E dot DL equals to zero. In the point form, we're going to have the curl of E equals to zero. But for the case of time varying field, uh, knowing that the curl of the close loop integration of E dot DL equals to negative integration of dB over dt dot ds. This is for time varying field. We are going to have finally that the curl of E is equal to negative dB over dt. Okay, so this is the equation uh, that we have uh, changed. Yeah, we have modified for the initial Maxwell's equation in static field. The static field given by this. Yeah, given by this equation, but for the case of uh, time varying field, is given by this equation that relates, yeah, that is basically related to the Faraday's law, yeah, concept of Faraday's law. Okay, so let's have a look on the first example uh, related to the uh, transformer EMF, okay, where we have a structure here. Um, we have a circuit, a uh, closed loop circuit having 20 ohm uh, resistor in series. Uh, the loop is given to be a size of 10 centimeter uh, by 10 centimeter, and the, the distance of this the square loop from uh, I1 current, which is flows in the z direction, is given by 5 centimeter distance. Yeah? So, if we assume that your circuit, I mean, this particular structure is having z direction here, sorry. Yeah, if you have is this your z direction, let's say this is your uh, yeah, let's say let's put it as y, yeah, and that should be x supposedly. Okay, uh, so we can assume that that should be the y direction. Okay, so the question is um, obtain the i two t, which is the current in this circuit, in the square loop. If i one t is two point five cosine two pi times ten power of forty ampere. So if based on this particular circuit, you can see that your current is a time varying, but your loop is uh, static, it's not moving. Yeah, the loop is static, it's not moving. Okay, so we can see that this is the EMF generation because I2T is the induced current in the loop. And the induced current here is to be based on the method of transformer EMF. Because we have learned just now that transformer EMF is a case whereby the EMF is generated by a time varying field uh, with a static circuit, which is typically uh, given by this structure here. Okay, so based on that, we can see that the EMF, uh, EMF generated in this loop, maybe be between a few points here, yeah, two points here. So EMF generated will be based on the equation of a negative d psi m over the dt, which is negative d over dt of integration bt dot ds. So bt is the flux density which is produced by the i1t. Yeah, i1t. Okay, so for this we can write that the emf okay, will be based on negative d over dt integration because we know that the circuit of i1 or the current of i1 is infinite in length because you don't have any information about the length so we assume that the length is infinite. So we are supposed to have b equals to mu naught of i1t over 2 pi of y, okay, uh, and the direction should be uh, in negative x direction because if you base on this, y and x is here, so basically by using the right hand rule, your field will be in the negative x direction, okay, and your ds will be equals to dy dz direction of negative x, yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a uh, negative d over dt, okay, of uh, mu naught i one t over two pi, okay, integration of one over y dy, integration of dz. So from this diagram, you know that your y is having a range from five cm to fifteen cm, whereby your z is from zero to ten cm. So we can have that y is having a range from 
5 cm, that's 0 0.05 to 0 0.15 cm. Sorry, meter, sorry. And Z is from 0 to 0 0.1 meter. Right, so I1t uh, is this value, which is 2.5 cosine 2 pi times 10 to of 4. So we are supposed to have uh, mu naught over 2 pi negative, uh, right, negative. So we have d over dt of 2.5 uh, cosine 2 pi times 10 power of 4 t, yeah, right? And if you proceed with the integration here, we have ln of 3, sorry. Yeah, I make a mistake here. Yeah? Sorry, I'm not sure what happened. Need to react here again, yeah? Sorry for this mistake. Um, okay, sorry, I made a mistake. Sorry for that. Again, uh, let's rewrite, for, rewrite again. So again, to have... Uh, the, the the EMF, sorry. Okay, the EMF could be equal to negative uh, integration of D over DT of B. Okay, uh, dot DS, all right. So you're going to have a negative D over DT over mu naught I T over 2 pi, okay, 1 over y, dy, and dz. So I think you have seen this before. Uh, so this will be 0 0.05 to 0 0.15, and z is from 0 to 0 0.1, yeah? Okay, so we're going to have uh, mu naught negative over 2 pi, uh, d over dt, okay, of the value of it is 2.5 cosine, so that should be 2.5 cosine of 2 pi, okay, 2 pi times 10 power of 4 t, okay, and this integration will give us ln of 3 times 0 0.1, okay, and then we're going to have a negative mu naught over 2 pi, so that differentiation will give us a, a, a sine or a negative sine, yeah, negative sine of 2 pi uh, times yeah, uh, 2 pi times 10 power of 4 t. Then we have uh, 2.5 cosine, sorry, uh, I make a mistake here yeah, for the integration, for the depreciation, sorry for this. Okay, so we have to have a negative mu naught over 2 pi. Okay, and then we're going to have a 2 pi negative times 10 power of 4 t, okay, times 2.5 uh, sine 2 pi times 10 power of 4 t, and we have ln 3 times 0 0.1. Okay, and end up going to have mu naught times 2 pi times 10 power of 4. I mean, there should be no t here, sorry for this, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and then times uh, 2.5 over 2 pi, okay, sine 2 pi times 10 power of 4 t. And then we're going to have uh, ln 3, ln 3 times 0 0.1. Oh, I can just put it in front here. So we have uh, times 0 0.1 times ln 3. Okay, and then it should be sine of 2 pi times 10 power of 4 t. Okay, so this will be your EMF in volts produced in a circuit. Okay, and then if you want to find the I2t, which is the induced current, simply we can see that the I2t will be based on EMF in volts divided by the resistance in the circuit, which is 20 ohm.
So that should be the current I2 in the units of MPF current. Okay, so the MF is what we have obtained, uh, sorry, it's what we have obtained here initially from this side. Yeah. So the MF that produced in the circuit shall be then divided by the resistance value and then it will give us the, uh, uh, the, the, the current in the circuit. Yeah? Right, and for this example number two, uh, we are having the circuit, a similar circuit, it's about a similar circuit as before, but this time we have inductor, this formed by windings of 10 turns of thin conducting wire into a square loop of 1.5 meter side dimension as shown in the figure down here. The loop is centered at 0, negative 4, 0 and fixed on uh, x, y plane, y, z plane, sorry. The loop is then connected to an external circuit consists of a resistor of 10 ohm. If there is a current source of 2 sine 10 T on the Z axis, find number 1. The magnetic plug linking a single turn of the inductor. Okay, so this is our inductor here. Yeah, this is our inductor. Right. Uh, we need to find out what should be the amount of flux linking the inductor, which is due to this particular current of 2 sine 10 T located on Z axis. Yeah. Okay, so for this, it's very straightforward then. Uh, the flux link by the current will be simply equals to B dot DS integration. Remember, we have the B just now will be based on U naught of I. Remember that B is due to this current. Yeah, due to this current. So we're going to have B will be mu naught I, which is 2 sine 10 T divided by 2 pi of y yeah if i take that yeah this is y yeah so why is that that uh, y basically is a variable uh, from the z axis to any point within the inductor loop okay and the direction would be yeah, if you based on this uh based on the right hand rule then to have the direction should be in the positive x direction yeah so x direction positive and the ds will be equals to uh, dy dz also in the x direction Okay, so that should be your flux, magnetic flux in the loop. So that should be mu naught multiplied with 2 sine of 10 t divided by 2 pi. And we have 1 over y dy. Then we have dz. So why are we having a range? Uh, let's say this is a 1.5. Yeah, 1.5 meters. It's also 1.5 meters. This is 0, 4, 0, 4, 0. So basically, this range here, this distance here will be 3.25. Yeah, and uh, this range here will be uh, 4.75. Yeah, 4.75. So for that, we're going to have the uh, y range to be from 3.25. Okay, to 4.75. Whereas for the z, it will be from negative 1. Point, sorry, negative 0.75 to positive 0 0.75, yeah? Okay, so then we have mu naught of 2 sine of 10 D, okay, divided by 2 pi, then we're going to have ln of 4.75 over 3.25, and then we're going to have 1.5. So that will be your flux in web. Yeah, so this is the amount of flux that is said to be uh, linked to a single turn of the inductor, yeah? because the inductor is having 10 turns, so for a single turn, we're going to have uh, that should be the amount of flux linked by a single turn of the inductor. Yeah, sorry. Then, uh, for the second question, is to find the induced EMF measured across terminal one and terminal two. The induced EMF, so basically, the induced EMF in this particular case, still, still we are dealing with the uh, transformer EMF because. Uh, the circuit is static, it's not moving, but the, the field is time bearing. So this is considered a transformer EMF. So the induced EMF basically, yeah, will be based on negative uh, differentiation of the flux, magnetic flux, okay? So previously we have calculated the flux, so the EMF, okay? The EMF produced for one turn, yeah, the EMF produced be based on negative d over dt of your uh, time bearing flux magnetic flux yeah so due to that we're going to have uh, 
EMF will be equal to negative D over DT of this given or calculated flux, magnetic flux, which will be mu naught of two, sorry, we need to have a, sorry for this here, I don't have enough space to write the answer. Okay. Sorry, uh, so for this, we're going to have that for, for one turn, okay, for one turn, the EMF will be equal to negative D over DT of this calculated uh, magnetic flux, which will be mu naught uh, of 2 sine of 10 T divided by 2 pi ln of 4.75 over 3.25. Uh, multiply with 1.5. So we seem to have differentiation with regard to 2 of sine 10 t will give us uh, a negative mu naught over 2 pi. So that will be 20 cosine of 10 t. And then we're going to have ln of 4.75 over 3.25 multiply with 1.5. Okay, this is for uh, one turn produce yeah EMF produced by, by a single turn. So then we're going to have for 10 turn simply we just multiply with 10. Yeah so for 10 turn we're going to have the EMF produced will be negative 10 of mu naught over 2 pi times 20 cosine of 10 t uh, ln of 4.75 divided by 3.25 multiply with 1.5. Okay so that should be your EMF generated by a 10 turns of inductance. Yeah? Right. And finally, is to find the induced current in the external circuit. Yeah, in the circuit. Uh, so it's very straightforward. Once we have the EMF, we can simply calculate the, the, the current induced in which the current, the I T, produced in the secondary circuit here, yeah, we base on the EMF divided by the resistance of 10 ohm. So we're going to have the IT in the secondary circuit will be uh, EMF divided by 10. So EMF is this EMF, which has been calculated earlier for 10 tons of uh, wires. Yeah? So that should be in ampere units. Right, so that should be the, uh, the method of calculating the EMF uh, and also the induced current for the case of transformer EMF.